Hey, this is Paul Solt from iPhoneDev.tv, and I'm going to show you a brand new way that you can convert numbers between strings. So in Swift 1, we didn't really have a whole lot of support, support for converting numbers. Now in Swift 2, we have a lot more support, and that's going to work with the new initializer. So here you can see a simple example. This is converting a string value, so that's a string, it has the double quotes, into an integer. It's a whole number that we can use in our application code. All right, new in Swift 2 is also the ability to do this for floating point values. So now we can do this for float and double types instead of having to jump through hoops like you had to in the previous version. So this is just native support. Let's go ahead and get started. So we can do a less precise number. So let's just create a less precise. And we'll do pi as an example. So a less precise number is going to be a float instead of a double. And here we just do less decimal places. So just 3.14. And we should see that that converts into a number. Now at any point, if your string doesn't represent a number, it's going to give you a nil on the right side. And we'll see that in one of the upcoming examples. Let's do a more precise pi. Now, for a more precise, more digits, you would use a double. And so here we can do 3.14, and if I get this correct, it's going to be 15926536. All right, so hopefully I, I typed that out right. And this is going to give us more decimal places. So that's the big distinction between float and double. And there you go. Super easy to convert in Swift 2. You don't have to jump through any hoops like converting to NS string or using the NS number format, or if you're just working with simple numbers without any formatting, you can just use the new initializers. Now, these are failable initializers, and what that means is that if the string that you're passing is not a number, let's say it's a word, well, it's not going to convert. And so let's see what that looks like. We'll create an invalid number, and we'll assign that. Uh, let's go ahead and use a double just for kicks, and let's do alphabet. So if I give it a word or if I give it a number with the letters and it doesn't make sense, well, we're going to get a nil value returned. And so that's going to be over on the right. So the initializers that you're seeing here, the int, the float, the double with the parentheses, that's an initializer. These are failable initializers. So if you pass a value that cannot be converted, it will return an optional with a value nil. Now, all of these are going to be returning an optional value. We just have some nice formatting in the playground that I'm working with. So when you actually want to use these, you do need to unwrap them to get access to the real value. And so let's take a look real quick at how we can unwrap them. So let's take one of our numbers, and I'm going to go for creating a new variable. And we're going to create a variable that I can change. So this is going to be our number. Now, initially, we're going to set this to a double, and we'll do 3.14159, okay? So that's going to be our initial value. But I also want to change the value so that it's an invalid value, and we'll be able to, to play around with that. So real quick, before we get anywhere, let's go ahead and unwrap this. We're going to do an if let, and we're going to say number is equal to number. And so this is one way where we can unwrap and bind... Uh, the value within an optional to a new variable if it exists. So here we can print out the value or we can just display it. So I'm going to do a print, and this is using the new print syntax. The number is, and then we can just print whatever we want right here. Number looks pretty good. And if it works out, then we're going to get our print message. And so here you can see the, the string value is going to print out. We can add this here. It's going to print this value. Now, if I were to change the value, let's go ahead and say var. Actually, we don't need to do that. Just say number is equal to, and we'll do a double, and then we'll do my name. So my name is not a number, so this is going to fail, and it's going to be nil. And so now we're not going to see any output. Well, we can't see any output. We're using the if let syntax, so this is failing, but we can write an else condition just to see what's happening. So let's go ahead and do that just to make it very clear what's going on here. The value is not a valid number. All right, and so that's it. 
And so now we're going to get a print statement when this is invalid. So you'll see that that appears right here. So that line of code is causing it to fail on line 15. But if I comment that out, now we can see that it works with the normal value. So this is one way in which you can leverage numeric data that you get from user input, that you get from a web server, that you do with calculations and you need to convert from a database or something like that. All right, so that's how to convert numbers. You can convert using the new initializer syntax. It is a failable initializer, so it will return an optional value. You have to unwrap that optional value to use it. Now, I've shown you how to unwrap on line 17 using the if let syntax. This allows you to get access. And we're basically replacing the value within the scope of the if statement with, we're replacing the optional value with the actual value if it exists. Otherwise, you can run other logic in your application. So that is how to convert string to number in Swift 2. Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhoneDev.tv, and I want to let you know about my new course. It's called Super Easy iPhone Apps. This is a brand new series that's designed for Xcode 7 and iOS 9, along with the new version of Swift, Swift 2. All right, so if you want to make an iPhone app, this is going to be the best place to start. I'm going to show you the best practices. I'm going to save you time showing you shortcuts that you can leverage in your own iPhone apps and really get you started making your very first iPhone app right away. So if you want to learn how to create an iPhone app from scratch without any prior experience, you don't have to be a programmer, you don't need to know C or Java or any of these programming languages, you can start today with Swift. All right, so just click the link in the center of the page, click anywhere on this video link, and you can jump over to learn more about super easy iPhone apps. Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy the tip that I shared, please click the like button and share this with someone else. All right, so thank you for sticking around. Thank you for supporting me and learning how to make an iPhone app.